Hey, hey, episode 21, Are You Serious? Holy smokes. Yeah, just <laughs> cranking them out one after the other. Mm. Cranking out storms one after the other. I think it's safe to say hurricane season's here. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've been a little busy, <laughs> thankfully. T- typing away. Yeah, thankfully nothing uh, nothing too too wild. Yeah, for sure. But uh, I, I saw a stat from the amazing uh, Phil Klotz. Bach, Bach. I can never <laughs> say his last name. Love you, Phil. <laughs> uh, the record for the most number of storms to form in under 48 hours mm. this week as we went through uh, this past weekend into Monday. Emily, Gert, Franklin, Franklin. and Harold mm. uh, all formed within 39 hours. Can we talk about the names? Oh, Gert. What is Gert? <laughs> Gert. Yeah. Gert and the Herald went out to a bunko yeah, hall. And yeah, yeah. That's where we get. But yeah, Gert. And uh, Gert came and Gert will be no longer. Gert came man. and went. Harold <laughs> came and went. So, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. We, and uh, a couple other things coming down the pike. So, you know, we're in the thick of it. Yeah. So far, so good here. And but, uh, it's a good reminder, too. Like, you know, it only takes one. We say that all the yeah. time. Yep. Um, and I think this is also like the time where, okay, here we go. Like, yeah. It's only going to be a wave or two that could pose a threat that we're going to have to watch. But Yeah, kind of high um, alert for the next six weeks. Yeah, six, yeah. seven weeks, I think we're done. Yeah, then we'll be done, hopefully. Hopefully an early shutdown of the season oh, this that'd year. That would be great. Which would be nice. So, Are You Serious? Episode 21. Yeah. He is Jamie Arnold. Yes, Chief Meteorologist here at WMBF News. And I am Andrew Dockery. Thank you for listening. I had someone stop me this weekend yeah. in the grocery store thinking they would say, I watch you every morning. No. I listen to Are You Serious weekly. I love it. So thank you. That's awesome. I That's special. Not quite as impressive, but I had a voicemail. Mm. Uh, well, actually, we both did. Yeah. From someone who wanted to know how much Are You Serious cost. And it's absolutely free to listen to us. <laughs> Sweet little lady from Conway. But if we need to charge $5. <laughs> I mean, if, if you want to send me 5 or 10 bucks, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to turn it down. Yeah, I had that. And then I had someone else. Um, Lee is what she went by. I just was on the phone with her. Um, this week, she was asking about the marine forecast and yeah. when that airs approximately because it's up quick. And then is, yeah. if you miss it, you miss it. So um, I said, oh, I'm sorry. We switched it to a different block, <laughs> yeah. but here's where it is. So, yeah. uh, But she listens to Are You Serious as well. So Good. really cool to see the response. Yeah. Um, yeah. 21 episodes. 21 in. At some I point, know. I'm going to do the math on how many questions we have answered to. Just because. Speaking of questions, we filled the box back up. <laughs> you asked. Up. And uh, we got the questions. We had a lot from the live episode, which we love. We're going to shoot the breeze. Yep. Um, we're going to talk about some of your storm chase stories. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Uh, first, though, how's Jamie? Doing? Jamie's good. Jamie's okay. good. Um, just, you know, still in that kind of August. <sighs> yeah. I know, cruising along. Mm. Um, not a lot going on. I will say, I. The end of August gets better for me than yeah. the beginning because mm. at least the heat waves are a couple days a typically. Shorter, yeah. It's like, okay, three days of humidity yeah. or two days, yeah. and then you get a little bit of a break. But, yeah. Um, yeah, same. I think we're all there. I think we're all ready for fall. I'm currently drinking pumpkin spice latte. Of course you are. Because you why are. not? And, uh, yeah, we've made it through. Um, you, um, well, we're not done. Uh, oh, we're not done. You also have a big birthday coming up. I do have a big birthday big tomorrow. One. How big? Uh <laughs> I'm going to make you say it. 60. You <laughs> 30. 30. Oh, you, you young, young little baby. Mm. Don't feel young. <laughs> young I feel like you're older baby. for every episode of Are You Serious <laughs> <Right>. With <laughs> uh, Yeah, but 30, yeah. so going to be celebrating this weekend. Nice. You will not see me on WBF News tomorrow morning. You will be filling in on yep. that beautiful Friday, so yep. I have a three-day weekend. Enjoy a little uh, birthday time. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do other than celebrate. So uh, Celebrate. It's all yeah. that matters. Old-fashioned. It's all that matters. That's for sure. Also, yeah. before I forget, we had a great group come... <laughs> We have to talk about the group. It was so fun. It was a blast. Hopefully you saw the photos. If not, we could throw these up. This is where our amazing Anya throws some stuff in. Yeah. Um, your mom. Yes, it came was the to uh, town. Uh, yeah, it was the Ori County Council on Aging. I love um, that. It was their 21st Avenue group and the Carolina Forest group, and they sort of together. Uh, came in for a tour of the studio last week, and my mom is a member of the uh, 21st Avenue group where they get together and play bingo I and, love that. and have some fun. Um, it was a whole studio full of <laughs> wonderful old people. 
That's the only way to describe it. It made my day. It, it what wonderful, wonderful retirees and seniors, and these folks are lively. We had them up doing weather. Yeah. Uh, doing live weather. They had great questions. They yeah. were all about it. Uh, we almost lost one. Can we talk about Danny? <laughs> we can talk about Danny. Danny. Um, which I've got a story about Danny. Oh, um, sugar. That's what he said. Oh, sugar. Yeah. Uh, we almost lost Danny. <laughs> Tour was kind of wrapping up, and we were... <laughs> I'll never forget the, that. We were leading the group uh, out of the out of the studio, and I just happened to glance down one of our back hallways, and there's Danny <laughs> and his walker just all by himself, a little bit oh. lost, but we corralled him. There might still be a senior or two left oh, in the building we somewhere. Do another round. <laughs> oh, Danny um, is quite fond of my mom. Really? Yeah, yeah. Mom told me all about it. Um, uh, Danny calls my mom the apple of her eye. Oh yeah, yeah. Apple of his eye, yeah. So uh, Danny's got a little crush on mom. So little, little senior center uh, romance action. Danny with the charm there, yeah, right? They and were he, all and so he was sweet. a good. He was a good little. He didn't, didn't really know where he was, but he was. Um, he was a good guy <laughs> with a lot of great questions. Uh, and, I and loved was in, it. He was into it. We yeah. love anytime we could bring tours in. Yeah. And I knew when you said who it was going to be. I said, "Oh, this is going to be a blast." It was so fun. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> if you ever want to come and you have a tour, let us know. You can email us. Um, we don't just tell anybody, but you know, yeah. groups. We always welcome. Yeah, love it. Oh, sugar. Yo, um, sugar. I can't. I can't forget yeah. about that. Yeah. Danny. Um, Danny might be my new my new step daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious after dark? Yeah, it started right. <laughs> right here. Ooh, this is only coffee. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Well, we'll save shooting the breeze for okay. the end because I really want to spend a little bit of time on these stories. Uh, for those that maybe didn't see the story or hear the story, you told your Floyd story Yep. a couple episodes ago, and we'll kind of recap that. Yeah. But that's not the only story when it's come to storm chasing for you. That's kind of what got you going, too. It, it did. It did. And, and I miss it. Um, hurricanes have always kind of been my favorite thing. I love, mm -hmm. you know, I've been I've been storm chasing out in the plains. Did that a couple times in college and loved it. Fantastic. But it's almost too quick. They're too yeah, fleeting. Yeah. I love to chase a hurricane because you get to experience it. And again, got to put this out there. You know, I don't wish for destruction. I don't mm -hmm. wish for death. But whether I want to see it or not, it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, so the power of a hurricane I just love. And the thing I love about chasing hurricanes is, you know, you do get to sort of savor it and enjoy yeah. it for a couple of hours. It's not just a fleeting in and out in a minute. That's a really good way to put it because in college growing up, you know, we weren't really a big tropical yeah. meteorology school. It was a lot of severe weather and a lot mm -hmm. of um, severe weather chasing and tornadoes and severe mm -hmm. thunderstorms. But that's a real like even the coverage yeah. of a hurricane from the TV aspect yeah. is a marathon. Mm -hmm. It's not this. Oh, we're going to be on for three hours, yeah. two hours. Nope, 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 it's a full blown it. thing. So I'd I'd like to know, at least from your instance, when you said, "Hey, I'm going to go out for my first ever hurricane and chase it," what was young Jamie thinking at that point? Um, and were you prepared? No. Okay. No, good. <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. I was, it was going to really date myself here on this one, <laughs> young little 30 year old buck. Uh, it was 1996. Okay. I was two years out of high school. Uh, I was at UNC Charlotte and I was an intern at WBTV, our sister okay. station in Charlotte and Hurricane Bertha developed and was ready to make landfall. Uh, somewhere near the North Carolina, South Carolina border um, was the official forecast. Well, I thought I'm an intern. I should be able to cover weather with the crews that are going down to Wilmington. Oh. So I begged and pleaded and begged and pleaded, let me go, let me go, let me go with the sort of higher ups at WBTV. They were kind of like on the fence. There were insurance issues liability issues so it sort of came to all right if you can get yourself there you can help out with the coverage mm. so i was determined to do it i told friends and family told mom all right going to go chase hurricane bertha so made the drive uh, from charlotte down to wilmington uh, had planned to meet up with the crew from WBTV, mm. 
I got there. And this was the night before Bertha hit. Um, and the crew said, we only have enough evacuation passes and sort of press passes for our crew. little crew. Mm. So there I was. <laughs> <laughs> By myself, <laughs> chasing Hurricane Bertha, uh, but I loved every second of it. Yeah. It was, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't get over onto the beaches. I was okay with that, um, so I chased it. If you're familiar with Wilmington, uh, there's the one sort of causeway that goes over to Wrightsville Beach. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of my base, and um, I was in my car the whole time, driving around. A little bit scary in a couple mm-hmm. points, you know. Um, Bertha made landfall, I think, a minimal category two, maybe like 105. Yeah. Not incredibly strong. Um, it was, you know, it was, a, it was a decent hurricane, but that was my that was my first, and it was just enough to absolutely get me hooked. Mm. To just, I was like, okay, this this is what I got to do. Well, we tell reporters all the time. There's always like a, a, for me at least, I feel like there's a hurricane moment where you're like mm-hmm. oh snap this is real this is the real deal like yeah <laughs> it usually hits with your even if it's a weak yeah you know yeah. tropical storm or something yep. there's usually a moment in your first time covering a hurricane where you're like oh snap mm-hmm. this thing this is what the, was this that for you when you were covering birth I, I will never forget and i wish <laughs> i wish i could find a working vcr and i, I still have the video i can still oh. see it in my head but of course i was shooting everything on a yeah. you know over the shoulder VHS camcorder um, was sitting uh, at a stop sign right by the USS North Carolina and Wilmington, the battleship. Mm. And we were kind of in the eye wall and was just sitting there and could hear this roar sort of coming from the distance. And it was just one of those powerhouse gusts. And it hit the car, and I mean, the car was just rocking in the trees, and you could hear the snapping of trees <laughs> off in the distance. I was like, oh, my God, this is, well, I'm doing this. Here I am. <laughs> I am doing this, <laughs> man. And But it was also just amazing to just experience that, and that was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I got to do it again. At that point, when it came to forecasting, at your age and then also Bertha, what were you using <laughs> I was going into Waffle Houses and hotel lobbies yeah. to watch the Weather Channel. There were no smartphones. Mm. There were there was nothing. Yeah. There was nothing. Um, I was listening to updates on the radio um, because back in the day, a lot of radio stations would sort of simulcast their coverage. Uh, so I was um, I had a little hurricane tracking map in my car. Uh, they would give the coordinates. I would plot where it was, and you know, all right, forty miles out, you know, um, and yeah, would pull over, get a cup of coffee at a hotel lobby look at the weather channel, check out the radar, and then head back out. Mm. Yeah. I asked that because when I grew up chasing in Kentucky, middle school Andrew at this point, this was – my dad was obsessed with storms, always mm-hmm. has been. Yeah. Big, big fan of storms, and he would probably still stand out to this day. In fact, mm-hmm. I know he does. Takes photos for videos or whatever. For us, when we started out, there was no Wi-Fi around no. or anything like that. Yeah. So we would go to McDonald's. Yeah pull up whatever free Wi-Fi access <laughs> right. we could get. There was no Wi-Fi. Yep. We would do the MapQuest maps Yep. because we knew a target point. <laughs> yep. And you would just sit there, and I think there's a photo, and I sent it to you. We finally, I remember the Christmas or the the year that we got a GPS that you put on your windshield. Yeah. We thought we made it. Crazy. Because that changed the chasing game for us forever. Yeah. Um, but now, like, the kids have it made. Mm-hmm. They got Data on Every, their phone. Everything, everything right there. Yeah. We didn't have any data or anything yeah, when no I was data, doing this. Like nothing. That's why my success was so low when I was young. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Yeah. I'm curious though about that. So when it comes from Bertha, you then look forward. Now remember, you told me you, you chased Bonnie. Yep, chased what Bonnie. Were, what I, were some changes? Uh, Ninety six was 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 a really busy year. And oh, so you did more. Uh, I didn't. Oh. I'm really mad about that. So just to kind of tie it into what we're going through now, the mm-hmm. 90s were similar to sort of the period that we're in now. The yep. 90s were really busy, and it started with Bertha. Uh, Bertha was a really early hurricane, July of 96. Uh, did bring impacts here to the Grand Strand. September of 96 uh, brought Hurricane Fran, which made landfall mm-hmm. in almost the same spot. Um, Fran is... Raleigh's equivalent to Hugo. Yeah. Uh, Fran 
big category last major hurricane to hit North Carolina category three up into Wilmington went up through Raleigh and again similar impacts up in Raleigh that Hugo produced uh, in Charlotte I couldn't chase Fran and boy was I mad oh oh I was mad school was back I was in college okay. I had exams papers due and I just I couldn't I just couldn't get away so I had to miss Fran I'm still mad about that yeah uh, 90 it. yeah 97 we were quiet 98 uh, Hurricane Bonnie came. Okay. Um, Bonnie also another landfall just across the border, uh, kind of in between Little River and Wrightsville Beach, I believe. Yeah, probably came ashore right around Sunset Beach. Another storm brought big impacts here. Uh, but by 1998, I had met up with a guy named Mark Suddeth, mm -hmm. uh, who was just getting his little company started called Hurricane Track, um, and just sort of an outlet for all sorts of hurricane information. Uh, Mark had some ends with the folks at the National Weather Service and the local emergency management. Uh, so he kind of finagled some evacuation passes and press passes so we could get into areas that just me out chasing by myself couldn't be able to. Um, so that was fantastic. And the great thing about Mark is he actually lived up in Wilmington. Uh, Bonnie was another kind of minimal Category 2 hurricane, but the fascinating thing, the thing I will never forget about Bonnie Two stories from Bonnie. It came ashore, and it stalled. Just mm -hmm. had a pretty well-defined eye. It stalled right as it came on shore. Uh, and so Mark and I were out chasing. We wanted to get into the eye, because mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of the ultimate goal, yeah. you know, to get into the eye. And it stalled more or less right over Highway 17 between here and Wilmington mm. for about four hours. Just sat there <laughs> and spun for about four hours. That allowed us the opportunity to drive in and out of the eye and the eye wall about four times. So we had the best time. Literally, we'd go north on 17. Oh, look, we're in the eye. Go into the eye wall, turn around and come back. Oh, look, we're back in the eye. Go in the southern eye wall. And we did that about what? four times. And it was, it was incredible. It wasn't a super clear eye. You know, you couldn't see the sun. But you could see the lightning, the the lightning of the sky, uh, kind of brightening up a little bit of blue here and there, and of course the winds went calm. But just to be able, that was my first real eye. Do you remember what the eye wall winds were in Bonnie? Uh, one oh five. Um, yeah, it it's was a pretty ripping. good transition. It was ripping. It was <laughs> ripping. No doubt about it. It was it was a good, good hurricane. Uh, my other funny story from Bonnie is we had chased all day. It was a daytime hurricane, but it was really slow mover. Like I mentioned, it stalled, and then it kind of finally started moving uh, in, into eastern North Carolina. And the back half of Bonnie was a good blast. It was strong there on the backside. Mark and I were both exhausted from chasing all day, and you know how it is. Your mm -hmm. adrenaline's up. You're up yeah. for a couple of nights. You're up for, for a couple of days. We tried to go back to his house and uh, nap a little bit, but the sound of the wind roaring outside, just it lured me out. I was like, I have to go back out, and I have to go experience more of it. And by this point, it's dark. So I did, by myself, middle of the night, mm. up and down Highway 17, almost went to jail because <laughs> I broke curfew. Mm. I'm the only person on Highway 17, if you're familiar with the area, near Bolivia, North Carolina. Oh, Tiny little Bolivia. Uh, blue lights come up behind me, and the guy pulls me over and was like, what are you doing out here, son? I'm like, I'm chasing a hurricane. He's like, I don't care. If I see you out here again, you're going to jail. You're breaking curfew, and it's too dangerous for you. So I was like, oh, okay. Maybe I should uh, head in for the night. Dang. Yeah, yeah. Little old Bolivia. Mm. Bolivia, North Carolina. Well, at least you have a story to tell about Bolivia. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, Bonnie was fun. Spent a lot of time with Bonnie uh, down around Southport um, and a couple of really nice uh, waterfront neighborhoods up around the Wilmington area. And even got down on the beach a couple times for Bonnie, which was which was really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. You can't beat that. Yeah. And then, of course, your then, famous. Then, yeah, Floyd. Uh, Floyd, Floyd story. definitely was, the, was kind of the biggest and the scariest um, – Floyd from beginning to end was just a scary storm to chase. I left Charlotte and from Charlotte to Wilmington, it's a straight shot right down highway yeah. 74. You leave, you leave Charlotte and you just drive East until you run into Wilmington. By that point, we knew the landfall was going to be somewhere between Myrtle beach and Wilmington. Uh, the thing about Floyd is uh, Floyd produced what we call a predecessor rain event. 
little uh, little geek yeah, little time for you here. Yeah, predecessor rain event. So you kind of have the core of the hurricane, uh, but as it interacts with some other features, sometimes Floyd did this and Matthew did this. Uh, if you have a little weak trough or a little weak front nearby, mm-hmm. um, all of that tropical moisture sort of blossoms into a huge area of rain way out ahead of the hurricane. So from Charlotte to Wilmington, it was just absolute pouring rain, flooding the roads, mm-hmm. tornado warnings left and right the whole time. And again, this is 24 hours before the storm even hit, and it was just dumping and dumping uh, so what was normally about a four hour drive took me about eight, <laughs> finally got to, uh, Wilmington, uh, Floyd was another nighttime storm and I won't go through all the details, but again, we got to go out on the Wrightsville beach, um, had a really close call with the storm surge, trapped us on Wrightsville beach. And again, I was with Mark Suttoth to show you how non-professional we were. He was driving at the time a pink pink hyundai something it was like a little hyundai hatchback Uh and it was pink and the night before we went out to go chase floyd he wanted to mount some weather instruments on the top of his car now this is his car (laughs) we got out a drill and started to try to drill holes in the top of his car to mount some weather equipment. So that was a really bad decision. And I, I think his wife was pretty upset about the, mm. the drill holes in the top of his car. But yeah, uh, so we went to, uh, went to Wrightsville Beach, got trapped. Storm surge trapped us on Wrightsville Beach. Um, and that's where I almost had my panic attack because we were the one little spot on the island that did not get flooded by storm surge. Um, but then I'll, as I mentioned, I'll, I'll never forget as the eye of Floyd came over standing on Wrightsville Beach. In the eye, you look up, you see clear skies. Wilmington on the mainland side, though, is still in the eye wall. Mm. And the eye wall is just being illuminated by power flashes I am just... as the power line's going out. And you just, that sort of, and it was just pitch black because, of course, there was no power. It's just pitch black, a couple of stars, and just faint illumination of the eye wall and the power flashes yeah. in Wilmington. And then... The drive back the next day, the waters were rising at the time. Floyd produced some of the worst flooding um, that area and this area had ever seen. 74 was flooding by the minute and the snakes and road collapses and yeah. And then (laughs) I got into the business and I couldn't chase anymore (laughs) because if there's a hurricane, I'm here working. That was going to be my next segue, especially in the people that want to get into the business. You see how passionate we are about yeah. storms and hurricanes. Oh, yeah. There's something to be said, though, especially with the Matthew and the Florence mm-hmm. and the Hugo and everything in between. The people who do this for a living, you almost have to, like, separate mm-hmm. excitement right, from, from your delivery, if that makes sense. Yeah. And there's a certain way to do that. I think we yeah. talked about it a little bit before. Yeah, it is hard because we do geek out we geek out we get excited for hurricanes because it's what we're fascinated with again we're not fascinated with damage and Mm -hmm. destruction of course we don't want that yeah but it's gonna happen Mm -hmm. and it's something we're passionate about yeah and we love to see it we have some great chasers in the carolinas we do some amazing chasers in the carolinas in fact when we know the forecast is pretty active my favorite thing to do, well, now I don't know how I'm going to do it because I did it on Tweak Deck, is I would make a little list to keep up with who's yeah. going out oh, each yeah. day. Yeah. And then you're basically pull, pulling for them. It's yeah. like, okay, I hope you get something. Like, at that point, you're putting all this money into it. Yep. I hope you have the most success possible. Oh, absolutely. You absolutely. Know? So, yeah. It's tough. So, Floyd was really, God, that was 1999. That was really the. That was the last one? The last hurricane that I actively chased. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously all the recent ones here I hadn't really had to chase, but I'm yeah. also in the studio yeah. working, uh, November of 2020, I was in Key West on vacation when Zeta Zeta hit. Yeah. Zeta kind of did two brushes by the Florida Keys. Mm-hmm. One at the start of my vacation kind of did a little loop and came back at the end of my vacation. Um, 
So yeah, I was out there chasing that. And I remember on vacation. Yeah. joking that it we was, were going to take live shots from. Yeah, you. no, it was great, and, and I love that because it's it's also fun to be somewhere else and like being in the Keys. Yeah, it just it's a different look, and it's it's that really feel. tropical. Just you know the different palm trees, and it just had a beautiful look, and it was fun. It wasn't anything crazy, 60, 70 mile per hour winds, yeah. but I was all about it out there chasing all day in the Keys on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> um, for chasing people that maybe not realize. When you're setting up to chase, especially nowadays, and they, it's amazing what they have technology-wise. Mm-hmm. Um, most of these people that go out now are very trained to do it. Yeah, They know what they're doing. But you basically fixate on a point. Mm-hmm. And it's been this way for years. Mm-hmm. You fixate on a point. I'm sure you did it for Bertha Bonnie Floyd. Mm-hmm. You fixate on a point, and then once you get to that area, all right, what's changed? Yeah. How does the forecast go? Yeah. Or do we need to move? Do we go south, north, east, west? And it's kind of probably how it's been so successful for so long. Yeah. It's really just put in a coordinate like, hey, it looks like this could be the active spot today. Yeah. I'm going to go there and I'm going to transition. Is that kind of what you did when you were younger? Yeah, that was absolutely it. You would sort of pick your target. Yep. You know, um, the the forecast cone for tropical systems back in the 90s was a lot bigger than it was now. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, So there was kind of a broad swath. The forecasting techniques weren't you know what they are now but um for all three of those cases it was generally the wilmington area and then we would pivot north and south Mm -hmm. you know a little bit just depending on where the the center of the storm was and depending on where you could get at the time because that's another tough thing about hurricane chasing is uh, as the hurricane wears on you get really limited as trees start blocking Mm -hmm. roads roads start to get you almost have to be smart about it yeah you got to be really smart about it uh you don't want to get too far back in the woods because you might not be getting out yeah. you know so you try to kind of stay on main roads uh, as much as possible but sometimes you can't yeah uh so yeah and the planes on big days for anyone that doesn't know out in the planes the roads are oriented literally by squares yeah so it's like it's yeah right <laughs> yep. in kentucky it was never that way right um Eastern Kentucky, it was for sure not that yeah, way. Yeah, you're chasing like this. You're and up chasing and down up and down. You're just and, trying to find yeah. a peak to look out. Yeah. Um, here, you're pretty lucky if you do want to go out and and get something. That's why we, our photography here is oh, so, it's so great. great. Yeah. yeah, we're not planes quality, but it's flat enough here uh, you that can you see can. For miles. Yeah, you can really get some good vantage points as storms coming in. And then Chris um, down near Lake Marion, where yeah. he takes up the drone. Oh yeah, mm, amazing. Love stuff. the photos there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of spoil one of our episodes in the future. I think you should. I'm excited about this. I'm excited. We're going to have one of my favorites in the Carolinas. Mitch West is going to come on. For those that don't know, Mitch West is kind of one of those people that we talked about does his own thing. Mm -hmm. YouTube every morning. Mm -hmm. Um, He does a forecast for the entire country. Mm -hmm. He also chases Chases. when he can. Yeah. And he does all this with while he's, you know, being a dad and a husband and and just I overall a good guy. A good just a guy. good guy. One of those that if he goes out, I'm cheering every time. Every time. Every yeah. time. Yeah. I think of a, a lot of people. I think of a Gerald as well. I think yeah. of Andrew Ellswick. Um, you, it makes think. you happy to oh, see I'm them pumped. be successful. Aaron Smith. Yeah. Like anytime someone goes out and that's like, okay, yeah. we know him. Yeah. Bring it on good. home. Good. Like I love yeah. it. But I can't wait. So yeah. coming up in a couple of weeks, we'll have Mitch. We'll ask him, I'm sure. Probably too many questions. We will, we will, and <laughs> and he will love every second. Of he it. will. Yeah, he's, he's gonna. You think we're a weather geek? Yeah, he's. Yo, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't Hardcore. wait. Hardcore. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I can't wait. Um. All right, let's shoot the breeze. Let's shoot the breeze. Let me be careful. The questions might pop. Look at out. this, man. We have filled this thing up. <laughs> Whew, look at that. Full Reminder: house. You can always send us your questions <laughs> on YouTube, the live chat, Facebook, Twitter. I'm going way down voicemail. In here. Way down in here. Some of them don't have names. Um, yeah, just a lot of questions in here, which we love to see. And who knows what it's going to be. Oh, gosh. I love this. Cirrus clouds are made from ice crystals. Do you guys like large or small ice cubes in your cocktails? <laughs> the very first question of the day. It, we always end up on cocktails. How? Oh, large. 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 Yeah, I don't want anything watering down my cocktail. Yeah, me either. I got the little sphere. The sphere. From my old love, oh, love that. Man. Yeah, yeah. I've got uh, the spheres and which I love and are perfect in a martini yeah. glass too because you pour that Cosmo over oh. it. Oh, it just gets cold. So also got good. some big square ones too. Also, hot take: whiskey rocks are a scam. It's a gimmick. They don't yeah. work. The little ones that are like yep. metal or whatever. Yeah. 
It's complete nonsense. That's good to know. I almost bought you some of those for Christmas yeah. a year or two ago. And I, I was think like, eh. I have like four sets. Yeah. And, and maybe they're not, but the four that I have, they're not the greatest. And I get excited every time. I was like, oh, it's a new brand. Let's see. Mm. Yeah. Well, mm. good but to know. yeah, large ice, good large, to know. large ice cubes. Great <laughs> question. Yep. Yep. We go big. I love it. Uh, let's see. There's so oh, many in here. <sighs> Ooh, I love this. This is a really good question. Are there times when you're unsure of a forecast and sharing it may be a challenge since the weather can change quickly? <laughs> and if so... Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask, too, maybe maybe for people that want to get in the business or even maybe what to look for from us, what's your best advice when that happens? When you're kind of like... Hmm. A little uneasy. It is... It's okay to say that. Yes, I agree. And that's kind of what I was hoping. It's okay to say, you know, this this is this could change, this is going to change. That's fine. Be be transparent with your viewers. Yeah. At the same time, you don't want to be so wishy-washy. Ooh, that's good. That your viewers don't know. So you still need a sense of confidence. Yes. Um yes. so the way I usually like to do a really uncertain forecast is um Give my forecast. Mm -hmm. So let's say we're talking about storms tomorrow. Just kind of typical around here. We're going to get storms. We're not going to get storms. Give my forecast. All right. So here's our chance of storms for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Storms pretty likely. But. But. And then throw in a quick. Caveat. Quick caveat. You know. Mm, cloud cover. Good. They don't happen. Don't get quite hot enough. Storms aren't going to happen. If they happen, they might be severe. Just a quick. You know. Yeah. Because you don't want to dwell on it. And you don't want to. You know, it's, it's, it, I think most people, especially in this day and age, get it. It's science. It's yeah, weather. It's now you still have changes. a couple of those old curmudgeons out there who's, <laughs> oh, it was a 20% chance of rain. <laughs> oh, shut up. Um, you, those still happen. <laughs> but most people understand, I think, that yeah. it is, yeah, it's, it's weather. I would almost argue, and this is not, to, uh, this is not meant to be a viral segment part of this show. I would almost argue the challenge for me sometimes is when our thinking doesn't line up with other forecasts. And mm -hmm. I mean that in the nicest way possible. For instance, yeah. when you look at these national-based or even the beautiful weather app that's pre-downloaded on your phone, yeah. what a lot of people don't know is that is a national-scaled forecast that then takes you know, these main cities and averages them out yeah. for your temperature. Same way with our wonderful people at the Storm Prediction Center, and I love mm -hmm. them so much. They are so smart at what they do. But to the same part, we have so many micro climates yeah, here. Right. It's yeah. micro scale meteorology with sometimes mm -hmm. to where we'll sit there and I'll say, okay, hey, there's going to be storms, mm -hmm. but I'm really not buying the severe weather risk and here's why. Yeah. So I think that's the tough part is when you want to show some stuff, but you also want to be very transparent. So um, obviously we still show the severe weather outlook. I think what we do a really good job with that maybe other places don't is we will straight up tell you like, hey, you may want to watch today. It looks like that look, yeah. or we'll just say, hey, yeah. level two risk, maybe a strong storm or two. I think right. you could tell in our voice, yeah, of yeah. how of how concerned maybe we are. Um, and obviously, we're in the season now with the most uncertainty okay. with hurricane season. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, mm -hmm. and from the minute you're tracking something, there's an in inherent uncertainty. And you know, obviously, if it's a storm that's curving a thousand miles out to sea, correct. You know, yeah, it's going up. It's out to sea. Correct. But if there's another one that's like, eh, well, eh, this yeah. happens, this happens, you know. And again, you just quick caveats, throw it in there. Yeah. And see just what happens. Have, yeah. Hey, at this time, it doesn't pose a threat, but yeah. we're going to keep an eye on it. Yeah. It's if you hear a but, you probably know from us. Right. It's a really good point. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do our next question. Um, oh. From outside Facebook. the mailbox. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is from our buddy, uh, Mark Wolverton. Um, he said, when we lived near D.C., the common summer thunderstorms consistently blew in from the west. Here, it seems summer pop-up storms can track into our area from virtually any direction. Am I imagining this? You're not. You're not. <laughs> You're not imagining no. it at all. We do get them from every direction in the summer. Yeah, that's actually a really good point because in Kentucky, it's mainly from the west too. Yeah. Maybe the south if you're behind a warm front. Yep. Um, but for instance, I can probably give you all the reasons. Yeah. Sea breeze could blow them from 
east to west. Yeah. Um, cold yeah. front from west to east. Yeah. It depends on sort of what pattern you're in. If mm-hmm. it's a typical summer day with not much going on, yeah. you're going to get storms firing on the sea breeze and they're going to push inland. Yeah. Um, sometimes they push inland. And then something will push them back yeah. towards the coast later in the day. Yeah, we've seen uh, that. You can certainly have that. Uh, we get a lot of our storms and rain that comes from the southwest. Yeah, warm fronts um, for sure. Yeah, bring um, that southwest flow. Yeah, and uh, especially late spring into early summer, a lot of our storms track southwest and northeast. Obviously, you get a tropical system or something offshore, an onshore wind. You'll blow storms onshore. Uh, Your favorite, the backdoor cold backdoor front. Backdoor cold fronts. Nothing, nothing gets me more worried than a storm that's moving from northeast North. to southwest mm-hmm. down the beach on the sea breeze. Those are always especially into a more scary humid storms. environment. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're not imagining. I never thought yeah. about that. Yeah, they come at us from every direction. Yeah. Every direction. That's really good. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mark stumped me yeah. on that one at first. Yeah. Because yeah. I was just like. That happens everywhere, but it really yeah. doesn't. Yeah. In Kentucky, you hardly ever get them from the north. You don't get a backdoor cold front in Kentucky that often. Yeah. Um, it would have to be something abnormal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere so. along the coast. Great yep. question, Mark. Yep. All right, this one's you. DC. I think I had that question in my mailbox, but I forgot to print it out, so I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> we have so many in here. Dave Bell. Thank you, Dave. Dave says, what is your typical work day like? Dave Bell via YouTube. Oh. You start because yours is a lot more unusual than mine. Right now it's your crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so what I love and hate about this time of year is if the tropics are busy, mm-hmm. it's always an earlier alarm. Just mm-hmm. because you have the update that comes out at 2 o'clock for the chance of development. You have an update that comes out at 5 a.m. You try to stay on top of it. That way you don't have to worry about it when your show hits. Yeah. So, like, these past couple of days this week, waking up 1.30, mm-hmm. typically it's like 2, mm-hmm. get in 2.45, but I've been getting in at like 2.15, focus on the tropics, you do your forecasting, which is, I think we've talked about many times, quiet days, which this week for us yeah. will take um, 30 minutes, mm-hmm. more active days, a little bit longer, so earlier day. Show starts at 5, goes till 7 a.m. We do the cut-ins. Yeah. We do all the social media stuff. Basically, once showtime hits, my goal is to have at least the first 30 minutes of graphics complete. I don't know if that's what you do when Mm-mm. I do mornings. Mm-mm. You fly uh, by the seat of your pants? No. No, I have oh. to have everything completely done. Everything done by 5. By showtime. Everything is done. I would <laughs> struggle so hard. That's impressive. Yeah. The web and all, too. Everything is done. And that's how wow. I operate in the afternoons. For me, I get in usually between 1 and one thirty in the afternoon. Oh, my goodness. Um, spend time on the forecast. Yeah. Spend a lot of time on graphics. Uh, we have a 2.30 meeting every day. Yep. Discuss what's going on. Um, and then usually from 2.30 until my first newscast at 5, I'm – Building graphics, putting my shows together, mm. updating web, updating social media, doing a radio forecast, dealing with whatever's going on in the building that day. Radio. Radio, <laughs> all that fun stuff. Um, but, yeah, I like to have everything done by showtime. My goal is to have everything done by 530. Because if I don't have everything done, if I don't have my workload done by showtime, I'm, I'm focusing on that, and I end up missing when I'm supposed to be on air. I get and that. And it just, it just gets. I get that. For me, honestly, during the newscast, so for me, 5 to 6.30 or 7.30, depending on if I'm doing the 7, that's almost my break. Yeah. I like to I like to just go through the newscast, mm-hmm. easy. I mean, I'll tweet and do a couple little things, but yeah. I don't like to be rushed doing other things because mm-hmm. I get sidetracked. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I would say the morning show, it's a little different than the evening because it's so go, 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 yeah. go, and then five hits. Yeah. And for the most part, I would say I'm done with three-fourths of my graphics. Yeah. The only thing I probably have left is like the end of a main and thirds. Yeah. Um, but then it's yeah smoother. Yeah. Work on the day ahead, which really helps me out because if I don't do that, then I'm really struggling the next day. Yeah. Where the evenings, I feel like the later you go, especially with storms, the mm-hmm. busier it gets. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, and that's... You know, this time of the year, you start getting those afternoon, evening storms. 
this time of the year it's it's even more complicated um the worst time in the world is you know 4 45 to 5 yep. during hurricane season because i'm going on the air for the first time at five mm. um for an example this week you got four tropical storms <laughs> it's awful. and so the national hurricane center issues brand new tracks Ugh. and all of the new information at 5 p.m thankfully it comes in a little before five but that's four tracks i got to update four graphics i got to update real quick and make sure web. that it looks good um and that's even that's just for storms that are out there when we get a storm that's threatening that five o'clock and 11 p.m advisory they're they're everything mm. you know that's that's where you're going to get the the big information and you got to have it ready to go on air and there's a 10 minute stretch there right before the five and right before the 11 p.m news that are whew, in hurricane season yeah i we're talking about episodes down the road and we were talking about bringing on one of our producers and i think that would be a great time to mm -hmm. just ask like what do you what, what's yeah. it like when you see us just lose it because yeah. we have like a code like hey always throw breaking tropics open yep for the 5 a.m just in case yep. just in case you need it yep. um because you never know i feel that to a t 5 a.m mm -hmm. can we move that to like right yeah i'm so jealous four. of the central folks folks in the central time zone because they they get theirs at, at 4 a.m so they still have if they have a 5 a.m show you know they've got a little extra play time yeah that's crazy yeah. so yeah that's our schedules in a nutshell i leave typically around 10 um Wednesday through Friday, 12.30, because I do the noon. But then yeah. you get a little bit of a break. Yeah. Um, and then you leave at? Um, I, I leave at 6.30. I'll usually go home for a dinner break, let the dogs out, hang out. Then I'm usually back by 8 or 8.30, as long as the weather's quiet. Yeah. Um, and that's when I kind of enjoy my time to be in the office, turn on the music, and, mm. I, and sort of crank out the, I call it the grunt work of the job. Yeah. Emails, responding to the boss about something or responding to somebody about something, uh, working on graphics and kind of yeah. getting things ready for the next day. Just yeah. sort of get, that's my catch up time. If you don't work one day ahead in this business, you'll always be behind. Yep. Yeah. Maybe two days. Yes. Yeah. That's kind of how I operate and you yeah. operate too. Yeah. Um, we have time for one more. I was gonna, ignoring all the time question cues. I'm sorry. It's I'm okay. going to pick this one because I see my name as the first word <laughs> in the oh. sentence. <clears throat> just for reference i mean we have so many anyways <laughs> oh wow i shouldn't pick this one. <laughs> oh, jamie it's 2023 and i'm sure technology has changed since you began <laughs> maybe not so much for robert andrew or matt so can you share some examples of what's changed since you began your career in meteorology? Well, we talked about someone on the chase, well, but I'm excited about this one. Well, you know, I don't carve my forecast in stone anymore. Um, oh, on the walls? <laughs> right. Etch it. Um, literally all of it. Yeah. All of it has changed. We've, you know, we've kind of gone into this in the past. The biggest thing that's changed, and it's not a forecasting thing, it's just social media, dealing with that. Uh, but just the availability, the number one thing is the availability of data that mm -hmm. we have to look at. It's just mind-blowing, and it's still changing by the year. Uh, you can go back five yeah. years and just think of the difference in the data. You go back 20 years when I first started, and as I mentioned this before, you know, I was looking at forecast models on printed sheets that would come out of a giant printer, and you would hand-analyze, you know, the charts. And, and now you can have... 50 different, you know, windows open in your browser, looking yeah. at different models and comparing, and it's amazing. One of my favorite ways to put the data aspect into what you just said, mm -hmm. when we have new producers, I always grab like a sheet of paper for them, and I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, we have, just for instance, five weather models. Mm -hmm. One says the high is 92, one says the high is 94, mm -hmm. one says 96, 91, 90. Now tell me what the high is going to be. Yeah. And base, and that's just five. That, yeah. We got way <laughs> right. more oh, yeah. than that. But that's what our job is like. Yeah. It's like there's always the newest thing coming out. Yep. It doesn't mean it's the most accurate. Yeah. But there's something you have to look at now. Mm -hmm. What was it? Was the storm Ian? Mm -hmm. What model was it that? I fell in love with the icon. That's what it was. The icon, a German model. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you. Icon. There's so much data out there that you can never ignore 
anything. And I had never even paid attention to the icon Me before. Either until then. Now, at hurricane season, the first model I look at when I get up in the morning is the icon. Yeah. Because it absolutely nailed in. Yeah. From days out. Mm-hmm. It had... Three days. I remember three it, days it out. It had in coming into our area as a hurricane three days out, whereas mm-hmm. the other models were playing catch up. You know, the original mm-hmm. forecast for in was kind of slowly cross Florida. Most of them didn't even bring it back out into the Atlantic, just yeah. kind of bring the remnants up through here. It charged the model icon consistently charged it across Florida, intensified it and brought it into our area three days out. Yeah. Imagine that though. Like yeah. all the data <clears throat> for your high temperature, your low temperature, yeah. your rain chance the next system mm-hmm. like that's that's what we deal with yeah and why we probably lose our minds a little yeah, bit yeah and the gray hair and everything else yeah absolutely it's a lot of staring at data and analyzing it and mm-hmm. saying okay what did well the previous couple of days how can we take yesterday's forecasts and yesterday's numbers and apply it to today like if you don't look for any up and coming if you don't look at the previous day mm-hmm. for your forecast that needs to be your starting point yeah because hey what was the temp what turned out, what did well, what didn't. Um, but, yeah, data. There wasn't a lot of data Mm-mm. back when you were. No, yeah, back when I was <laughs> chipping into the stone, <laughs> doing equations with my abacus. Oh, man. That's a really good question, though. <laughs> yeah, that was good. And then the demand of data, but I would say also the demand of just wanting the information. Yeah, yeah, people want the information. Now. They want it. They want it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, as soon as it comes out, they want to know. Yeah. And so that's, yeah. You're tired why do that? we do this again <laughs> <laughs> which is why our podcast is started yeah, you yeah. know chance to relax chance to relax and also us to unwind here so so, yeah, um, so we got mitch west coming up mitch west coming up i think we have someone in the middle but i can't remember or something in the middle we'll figure it out yeah we got a lot of people who really like the idea of our boss coming on yeah so we're gonna i to approach him about that see yeah. if he's still willing to do it i would love it yeah I would love it. He is a high, strong fella. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Arnold no longer works in defeat me. <laughs> it would be great. It really would. Yeah. I think there'd be a lot of laughs, a lot of giggles, yeah. a he lot wears, of stories. He wears a watch to monitor his uh, heart rate. Heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> get, all, get all this out right now. Sometimes I like to go into his office and just see how many times he looks at his little heart rate thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, got something yeah. real quick. Yeah. Um, that does it for episode 21. Um, I think we've won about 47, 48 minutes. Yep. Good stuff. Like, share, comment, review, subscribe. Send questions. Send questions. Yeah. Send questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. It's been good. Um, hopefully, um, Hurricane Seasons continues to behave. Yeah. Um, if not, we'll be here. Yeah, we'll be here. We may not be here for a podcast if it gets crazy, but we'll be here other than that. Yeah. I would. I still wouldn't mind if we do have something out there, like a live forecast discussion one night. I'll come in for it. Yeah. Need to, that'd be fun. Yep. But anyway, so that does it for us. Thank you all for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, y'all.